Today our host is Professor Greg Semenza from Johns Hopkins University. He was awarded the 2019 Nobel Prize in Medicine for his studies about uh, the body cells and how they react to the levels of oxygen. Welcome Professor, thank you for being with us. And so I would like to ask you why the Nobel Prize is so important for a scientist, but also for each of us? Well, I think the, the real value of the prize is that uh, the publicity and how it informs the public about science and about how basic science discoveries can lead to new treatments for, for disease. Okay, and just uh, let me tell me tell you about the, that day of the ceremony in Stockholm. I imagine that your emotions were particularly intense. Yes, well, you know, it, it's a whole week of activities. So my wife and I, we went from one activity to the next and it was nonstop. Um, and of course, you know, it involves protocol with kings and queens. So it, it was it, both enjoyable and stressful, uh, but the ceremony was beautiful. So it was at that time that you really realized that now you had changed your life and you were a Nobel Prize, I suppose. Well, <laughs> yes, the, the ceremony was, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite fantastic. And uh, we know that each Nobel Prize has in some way a unique story. We would like to know how was your Eureka moment when you realized that you were really doing something special and discovering something unique? Yes, well, we, we studied at first a, a very specific question. We wanted to understand about how the body controls red blood cell production. Um, and, and when we discovered the control for that, we looked in other cells and found the same system. So we knew now it did many more things than just uh, control uh, the production of red blood cells a and that was a moment when our thinking about the whole process really expanded to include other um, other conditions like cancer and, and cardiovascular disease. And so also the possibility of new treatments for all exactly. these diseases. Yes. From let's say diabetes to heart failure and cancer too, right? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so we, you are paving a new way of also of drugs, I suppose. Yes, yeah, so the first applications have been a drug to treat anemia, uh, and the other is a drug that treats kidney cancer. And those are just the first two. I think there will be uh, many others. So uh, let's talking about that Eureka moment. I would like to know if you can tell, tell us what's the recipe not to be just a scientist but also a brilliant, a creative scientist who is able to, to discover. Yeah, I'm not sure that creativity can be taught. You know, uh, some people have the, the creativity. Others can do very good work, for example, is in the laboratory but may not have the, uh, the ability to come up with new ideas. Um, but that's really what makes it so enjoyable, is we have an idea, we start to test it, but we end up going off in a direction we didn't expect. Uh, and that's when we learn really new things, when we go off in an unexpected direction. So we are talking about scientific method, but also, uh, I would say, a sort of instinct. Well, yeah, there is a certain instinct. Um, but also we say, one of my uh, mentors would say, search and research. So you have to uh, be willing to, to confront a, an unsuccessful experiment and try again. So inspiration and perspiration, yes. as we say. It's, and some luck. And some <laughs> luck. <laughs> yes. A lot of luck. A anyway. lot of luck, yeah. yes. <laughs> so good scientists are also lucky I in think some so. way. I yeah. think so, yeah. And so with the Nobel Prize, uh, did you feel that you started in some way a, a new life and a new career too? Yeah, people ask me about that and um, uh, I've been fairly determined that it would not change my life and you know that we continue to do the same science because we're, we haven't reached our goal yet which is to develop new drugs for cancer which we've been working toward for the last 
10 or 15 years. So for me, that's the real prize. So you are going on with your studies. Absolutely, yes, and we're getting, we're getting close. Because you know that sometimes for some Nobel Prizes, the Nobel Prize can be dangerous in some way for their psychology. It does change some people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I was saying that uh, in some way, you had uh, with the Nobel Prize also the opportunity to, to reach a wider audience and I suppose uh, many, many people starting from youngsters, for example, and in some way uh, I would like to know how important now is for you the outreach mission that now every scientist in some way has to implement. Yeah, well, uh, you know, so first of all, I, you know, I'd like to inspire the youth because science is so much fun. You know, you have great freedom to follow your ideas um, using whatever techniques you, you uh, l would like to use. Um, and you have this unpredictability and you never know where things are going. Um, you make friends all over the world who share your passion for science and you get to visit them. Um, so it's a fantastic uh, career. And so, of course, from the U.S. also to Italy here. And, um, well, let me ask you about the, again, the youngsters. We know that they, we are pushing them in order to study the so-called STEM disciplines. Mm -hmm. And so we know that it's very important to, to press uh, and emphasize this aspect. So uh, how can we convince uh, all these guys to, to study and, and to feel this enthusiasm for science, mathematics, engineering, and so on. Well, you know, one of the problems about the Nobel Prize is it's given to old scientists, but it's for work that they did when they were young scientists. Mm -hmm. So the public needs to understand, right, that the science is done by the young, okay? okay? And, and, you know, of course I continue to do the science, but the, the big discoveries tend to be done early in people's careers. Um, and so people shouldn't, young people should not think this is not for them. You know, this is for, for, for the older generation. No, it's for them. So we can say that the ideas of Nobel Prizes are for youngsters, first of all. Yes. <laughs> and then you, you have time to win the Nobel Prize. Yes, you know, so I say the, Later on. <laughs> Young people make discoveries and old people get prizes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have a final question about, about you as a, as a person. Well, I suppose that for you science is, is, is both an attitude and also a passion, but I, I'm curious to know what kind of passion do you nurture outside the lab in your, in your life? Yeah, so I always felt, you know, that um, I have the, this passion for science, but I didn't want it to encompass my entire life. Okay. And so, you know, I, I made sure that I would, uh, as much as possible, uh, leave time for my family, um, my, my three children and my wife. Um, and, uh, of course, they ha were always very generous and understanding. Uh, but for me, that was my other passion, my family. Um, and between that and my work, uh, it did not leave much time for hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a cool and interesting life. Professor Greg Semenza, thank you very much. Thank Nobel you. Prize for Medicine, thank you.